What is going on everyone? Leon checking in and today we're at it again with another video. Today we're here to talk about motion sense, which is a very difficult topic to talk about because there's a lot of negativity around it, but I'm hoping that maybe I can bring a more positive point of view. So motion sense is a feature that's available on the Pixel 4. I wanna label this as an accessibility option, which allows you to perform a few functions on your phone using a hand swipe. So the feature is obviously very new and it's limited and that's where all the negativity comes around. Also, there seems to be a learning curve here and I think a lot of people don't have patience to learn how to use it. So there's also negativity around the fact that it's not very reliable. So the goal of this video is to provide some education about motion sense and how to use it better. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so here we are with the Pixel 4 XL. And if you didn't know, this has face unlock. So we're gonna pick this up here. It's locked right now. It's gonna look at my face and unlock. You can see that happened pretty quickly there. Okay, so let's say that you have the Pixel 4 or the 4 XL and you wanna turn on motion sense. How do you do that? You've got the notification shades. So you're gonna swipe down once and then you're gonna swipe down again. And you're gonna see this little gear icon right here. You're gonna click on that. Then you're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom here. You're gonna see system and we're gonna click on that. And then you're gonna see we have motion sense right there. We're gonna click on that as well. And you can see this is where all the motion sense settings would be. Now the thing to note about this is this does use additional hardware and software. So this is going to drain your battery faster. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and set the phone down here and we have a track, so I'm gonna hit play. And then we could try and do motion sense here. So we're just gonna swipe over the phone. So you can see the track changes. If it's not as apparent though, we'll pull up the album art and then we'll swipe again. So you can see that's how that works. Now the cool thing to note is that motion sense also works in landscape mode. So if you allow the phone to rotate, you can also control it this way. Now the cool thing about motion sense is we can also create a timer and interact with it using motion sense. So we're gonna set a timer for 10 seconds. We're gonna lay the phone down here. We just started it. You can see it's counting down. And when it gets to zero, we're gonna interact with it using motion sense. So you can see just by swiping over the phone, we were able to stop the timer that we had going and the noise went away. Now there's also a Pokemon game you can use to practice this, to learn the quick gestures. So we can hit start and we can try this out. I'm gonna lay the phone down here and it's gonna say swipe to open the Pokeball. So there we go, that opened up the Pokeball, just swiping over it. This is just a demo to help you learn how to use it. So now we can wave to say hello to Pikachu. And you can also reach into Pet Pikachu. You can see it works pretty easy. And this just continues on, so you could practice with a few different Pokemon just to learn how to use Motion Sense. So here we are with the Pixel 4 XL, and a lot of people are gonna give tips on how to use Motion Sense the best way possible. Of course, you can wave your hand over the phone, that works, but what I like to do is a little bit different. I actually like to take my hand and just kind of flick it. And you can see that changes the track too. You don't have to do a big wave. A little one works just fine. And you can see it's pretty consistent once you get down your way of doing it. Now the goal here is really to start before the sensor on one side of the phone and then clear it completely on the other side. If you go only halfway, it's not going to really register. You have to start completely on one side and then clear it to the other side because the sensor is right here. Now, when you get good at your strategy, you'll kind of understand where you can start and where you can end. So here we go again. So you can see we're gonna start at one side here and we're gonna clear the whole phone. And that's how it works consistently. So when you're starting at one side and you're going to the other side, you have to remember to have that dedication. If you're rushing because it's not working, you may not be clearing all the way and you may not have your swipe recognized. The other thing to consider here when using motion sense is proximity. So you don't want to be too close to the phone because what you'll do is you'll end up hitting it and obviously that's not gonna do anything. You don't wanna to be too far either because the radar won't recognize your swipe. 
So this, just like anything else, is gonna take some experimenting. You obviously can do it a little closer, it works fine. And then you slowly back up, see how far you can go here. So you can go a good, maybe six inches above the screen or so, and it'll still register. Works pretty good. But as you get further away, it's going to be less consistent. So we're gonna have maybe about eight inches or so here. We're gonna try that. So it works from about eight inches high still. We're gonna go a little higher than that. And it looks like we're not gonna register there. Yeah, okay, so we got one. So it's, it's about eight inches or so, give or take, maybe an inch or two. Now the other way to learn motion sense a little bit faster is to hold the device in your hand. And that just allows you to control more of the angle to see how you have to hold it in order to switch tracks. And then you're just gonna swipe over it like you would and experiment. So you can see this works consistently once you get down your way of doing it. Okay, so here we are with the Google Pixel 4 XL and we're gonna talk about environmental situations in which motion sense is actually pretty beneficial. So here we are in the Maps app. We've got it full screen here and normally to change tracks, you would have to go to the app that's playing the music or you'd have to pull down on the notification shade and use the controls in the notification shade. So again, we're full screen. We don't have to do any of that. We got motion sense. So we can just swipe over the phone and that's going to change the next track. The next situation in which motion sense is beneficial is if you're wearing extra apparel. So here in the Northeast it's winter time and it's pretty normal to wear a glove. Now, as you know, with a glove, a lot of times you can't really interact with your device touching the screen doesn't really do anything unless you hold it just right. So if I use this glove just right, I can actually interact with the screen, but it's still challenging. So what we could do is use motion sense. Just swipe over the phone screen and it'll change tracks. The next environmental situation where motion sense would be useful is if your hands are soiled. So I can't really get my hands dirty right now, but I have the perfect example that I think a lot of people can relate to. So here in the Northeast, we've got dry weather. We're gonna put some lotion on the hands here. This is gonna be a little slippery. We're gonna leave some extra so you can see it's shiny. If I were to try to use my phone like this, my screen would get messy. Um, it would probably misbehave, it'd be erratic. So instead, what we could do is use motion sense again. Not touching the phone. It's the easiest way to do it. I can continue to lotion my hands up, have those nice soft hands, and then we could swipe again. So this is another situation in which it would work great. So not only for lotion and hands, but if you're cooking, maybe you're doing an oil change on a car, anything like that, you can actually change tracks in those situations. Now my favorite place to actually use motion sense is in the shower. and. It's kind of interesting because with the Pixel 4 XL, if you get just a little bit of water on the screen, it doesn't respond whatsoever to actual finger inputs. So this is where motion sense comes in handy. I've also used motion sense in the car. I have my phone mounted to my dashboard and we could change tracks in landscape mode. So as you can see with the Pixel 4 and this whole motion sense feature, it is limited right now. and. That's because it is in its first generation. Anyone who's buying this phone, you're going to be the testers. And we want to thank you. We need people to actually be open-minded and positive about this. There's a lot of negativity because it's so limited. Sure, maybe it doesn't work great on the Pixel 4 yet. Maybe it'll be better on the Pixel 5, or maybe it'll get moved to a different device. But if we go ahead and we're just negative now, we're going to eliminate all the future possibilities. And that's what makes me sad. It's not that people are hating on the Pixel 4, rightfully so, maybe they should, but don't hate on the actual technology. If you say that it's just a gimmick, then it doesn't really have a chance to go into other things. So yeah, it may be a gimmick here, but just enjoy it and 
see what happens with it. Maybe Google will make it better. And if we support it, maybe it'll get better. And maybe it'll move to other things. Maybe it'll move to our televisions. Maybe it'll move to our cars. Maybe it'll move to our doors. Maybe it'll move to all kinds of things we can't even imagine. But if we go ahead and we just say, you know, it's just a gimmick, then that it's all done before it can even get anywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that. I'm going to say that I'm probably the unpopular opinion about all of this. I really do think this is really cool. Maybe it's not executed the best yet and it is limited, I do agree on that. But I do feel part of me living today is to support this. When I support this, I'm supporting the future. It's not about me, it's not about how good it works now, it's what it could be. So that is pretty much it for this video today. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, make sure you leave a like. If you have any questions or comments, just always drop those down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Now you can support the channel in a few ways. You can head on over to my Amazon storefront. If you purchase anything off my list, it does support the channel. The next way you can support the channel is by sharing this video with someone who might enjoy it or find it useful. And the last way you can support the channel is just by hitting that subscribe button. Now liking and subscribing are very important. Don't just do them because they tell you to do them. When other people see the channel has a bunch of likes or maybe a lot of subscribers, they see that people are enjoying it, they find the content useful, and then maybe they're likely to watch and subscribe as well. So that is pretty much it. And until next time, Leon checking out.